Finally, question 16, and a proof by induction. Yeah, you've got to prove to Morphe's theorem here. Right, well, same as before. Consider n equals 1, and it's for n is greater than or equal to 1. Integers, n is greater than or equal to 1, that's the same as the natural numbers. So, what happens at n equals 1? Well, the left-hand side would just be cos theta plus i sine theta. The right-hand side would just be cos, we'll just identify as 1 theta plus i sine 1 theta, which is just cos theta plus i sine theta, which means the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side, which means it's true for n equals 1. Right, that took a bit of doing, didn't it? Now, make your assumption. Assume it's true for n equals some other number k, which would mean that, this is inductive hypothesis, that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power k would be cos k theta plus i sine k theta. I'll call that 1. That's the inductive hypothesis. And then consider... Consider n equals k plus 1. What have you got for k plus 1? Well, you've got this. Consider k plus 1. You've got cos theta plus i sine theta to the power k plus 1. And the first thing I always do is just split that. So I've got cos theta plus i sine theta times cos theta plus i sine theta to the k. k factors plus another one factor, k plus 1 factors. I think I'll bring this over a bit, which means I've got cos theta plus i sine theta times, now you call in the deductive hypothesis, I'm saying that's the same as that, times cos k theta plus i sine k theta by 1. That's calling the deductive hypothesis. Now it's just a case of multiplying this out. <coughs> There's only the four terms. What have I got? I've got cos theta cos k theta m plus i sine, well I'll put the cos one first, i cos theta times sine k theta, run out of space here, plus i sine theta times cos k theta, and then finally i times i is minus sine theta times sine k theta. That's various terms. Put the real parts together. If you put the real parts together, notice what you've got. Cos theta, cos k theta, minus sine theta, sine k theta. That forms a pattern, as you know. Cos cos minus sine sine. And the other part, plus i times, and here I've just got... I'll put that one first. That's something more obvious. Sine theta, cos k theta. Uh, run out of space. Plus cos theta sine k theta. I don't know if that's going to show. And they're, they're both expansions you're familiar with. That's the expansion of cos a plus b. So that goes to cos theta plus k theta plus i times. And that's also the expansion for this time of sine a plus b. So sine theta plus k theta. And then finally putting that together, well, and then you've got cos of k plus 1 lots of theta, cos k plus 1 theta plus i sine, again, theta and k theta, k plus 1 theta. Which means you've replicated the original pattern with the n's replaced by k plus 1. So if n is k plus 1, it is in fact true. Which means that if it was true for that k though, true for n equals k did in fact mean it was true for n equals k plus 1. Need to go up the top for the last bit. Or do I? I'll just finish it off here. No, I'll just finish it off. Just squeeze it in. Which means, since it was true at the start, at n equals 1, then it's true for 1, true for 1, true for 2. You've proved the stepping stone. True for 1, true for 2, true for 3, true for 4. That means it's going to be true for all n, where n are these natural numbers. That was it. And the last part. Final four marks. Yeah, this question is easier than that um, Gauss elimination question. Four marks for this. There's not a lot to it. You should be able to spot straight away what's happening. There you're just going to use that pattern. So that's going to turn into cos 11 pi upon 18 plus i sine 11 pi upon 18 divided by the cos of 4 pi upon 36 plus i sine 4 pi upon 36. 
And then something that doesn't you don't do an awful lot because you get so absorbed just with your basic demovers is the business about when you multiply complex numbers in polar form, you're adding the arguments, and when you divide numbers in complex form, in sorry in polar form, you're subtracting them. So that would just turn out to be the cos of 11 pi upon 18 minus, well I'll knock that just down to pi upon 9, plus i sine, subtracting the arguments, 11 pi upon, that was an 18 there, minus, I'm just now bits all over the place, minus pi upon 9. So what's that when it's at home? Well, that's 2. 11 eighteenths take away 2 eighteenths is going to be 9. So it's 9 eighteenths, so that's pi upon 2. So I've got cos pi upon 2, so that must be the same thing, plus i sine pi upon 2. Well, cos pi upon 2, the cos of 90 degrees is 0. So I've got 0 plus 1 times i. So I've got 0 plus i for the number. So that means that actual answer is just i. That all just comes to i. But then what that says is the real part equals 0. There it is.